Hello, everyone, <clears throat> and uh, welcome, welcome to the first day and the last session of the first day of the Spring Blog Festival. This is Nellie Deutsch, not Roselli. Roselli uh, should be here, and if not, she will be here. Um, I want to thank you for joining us um, in the last session. It may be very late for many of you. I know it's late in Europe. And um, also in the um, in North and South America, in some countries it's seven o'clock, in other countries it may be even later in the evening. It's been a long day, so if you've held out, and just uh, just to let me know in the chat, how many of you? Hello um, from Argentina. How many of you have uh, been here since the beginning of the day? If you can give me a thumbs up. Anyone been here beginning of the day besides me? It started at 9 o'clock a.m. with the opening ceremony. So, Tom, you have stayed right through the day. That's wonderful. That that you deserve a badge, a certificate, uh, a trip around the world. Oh, Roselli's with us. Okay, that's great. So uh, let me just show you where that's Eba, and at the other end is Roselli. And I'm really, really happy that she's here and she's going to be talking about uh, connecting with our students. All right, so this is really exciting and I'm really looking forward to it. So blog to your friends. Twit to your friends and wiki to your friends or Facebook to your friends. There should be besides blog, there should be a Facebook to your friends. I don't think there is, but maybe we can make up a word. Okay, so this is the link that you can share. Okay, and tweet so that your friends can also come and enjoy our last session of the day. So Roselli, let me give you... Um, the link. I know you missed the co-presenter link, but that's okay. There we are. Hello. You look just like your photo, except for the glasses. So I didn't introduce you. Uh, there's your presentation. Okay, there is Roselli Sarah. And I'm really excited because uh, you're going to tell us about the wonderful work that you've been doing. And we're looking forward to that. But I don't hear your voice. So I hope everything's okay at your end. And that you have audio. If you could just, if not, I've got support. They said they would be here in case there were problems because we were not able to connect with you. So, um, let me see if I can get support back here. Uh, we need help. We need help. Okay, so we're going to be talking about sense of a student sense of accomplishment and achievement, which is really, really important. I know you can hear me. Yes, it is Nellie, and you can probably see me too. Um, okay, Mebin is here from WizIQ Support. So if you could help us, I'll just uh, pause the recording and uh, hopefully my Camtasia won't crash, but I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to stop the Camtasia. The Camtasia is going to continue. So um, Mebin is saying to refresh, perhaps. I don't Roselli, are you using a Mac? If you could just... Um, you're not using a Mac. Okay. Hello, Raymond. Good to see you. And where are you coming from today? So if everything seemed okay, Roselli, then it must be just, um, um, the fact that you may need to. Hello, Gordana. Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, Roselli's trying to set her um, audio. Oh, you know what? It might have gone down. 
it happens sometimes roselli go into the wiz iq settings sometimes the bar goes down to zero and you need to bring it up it's happened to me a few times it's very frustrating but uh, you know technology is not perfect people are remember that no she's not tom she came in but it doesn't make a difference it's actually the same thing if your um whiz iq settings audio and video are okay then it's okay but i think uh, maybe is right if you go into your do you know where your device settings is roselli oh is it early in the morning ajari what time is it in nigeria that's okay roselli we're we're patient if you could just go into the wiz iq settings and i have a feeling that the bar is on zero yes the black wrench mine is gray tom it's not black is yours black or am i seeing gray <laughs> after about 10 hours of um it's 12 what time is it 6 a.m ajara so what is the 12. oh it's past midnight in serbia and i think um Jordana, I think that Raymond is also in Serbia. Maybe just imagine if you're actually neighbors and you didn't know it. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yes, uh, maybe uh, Roselli has both audio. You can see she's got video. But uh, yeah, but the audio for some reason is not picking up. And I think that it's because it's in zero. Um, and I'm not sure. Roselle, if you can share your Skype ID with Mebin, uh, he can go into your system and see what's going on, your computer system. That didn't sound right. So in Venezuela at 6.30 p.m. Oh, that's pretty early. I thought it was later than that. So I guess the difference between Toronto and Venezuela is half an hour. So, okay. So uh, maybe you've got uh, Roselli's uh, Skype ID. If you can connect with her and maybe um, through team, the team, what it's called, uh, the team something or other, if you can see what's going on, because I have a feeling that her um, volume is down to zero on WizIQ. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see her webcam so well. Team viewer, that's right. So can you do this on Skype, maybe instead of doing it here? Who's in a sleeping mood? Hassan. <laughs> Anyone working tomorrow, by the way? So you can all sleep it. Oh, you're working? No. Tom, are you working tomorrow? Anybody want to use their, try their mics? So we get another voice in here. Sue, would you like to try your mic and see, um, and your webcam? Just as a little test for tomorrow. Yes, good for you. Especially after Ebba's session on um, doing things differently, upside down, trying things out. Okay, I'm going to give you a webcam too. I hope you're decent. 
um, Sue, if that's okay. I see you're using um, WizIQ Desktop. There we go. Hello, we see you. I don't know if we hear you, but we see you. You want to try speaking? I don't hear you. Oh, is it me? Can anybody hear? Maybe it's a cup of hot coffee. I don't know, um, Ajari. I can't drink hot coffee. I, I usually put cold water so I can drink it. Sue, I think, oh, I know what happened. Sue, you disabled your mic. That's why we can't. Okay, now we should be able to hear you. No, you disabled it again. Yes, now we should. Can you try speaking? Oh, you're going to need uh, tech support too. So I'm glad we tried that. So, um, yeah, maybe we're, you're going to have to help Sue after this class. Are there any more in the spring? Yes, of course. Um, you know, your, your name looks familiar, but I'm not sure. Uh, MG. Yes, there's a whole day tomorrow and Sunday. This is the first day. It's from the 14th, well, which ends, until the 16th. So we've got um, from 8 o'clock, I think tomorrow it's from, um, let me check. Tomorrow it's from, tomorrow we're starting with Sylvia at 8 o'clock in the morning, EST time. And then... Um, so we're starting earlier tomorrow, so it's going to be the same number of hours. And then Shelly's going to have the blogging as an author panel. And then there's Nancy blogging to connect. Nancy's in Grona. And Sylvia's going to talk about reflective blogging. Uh, Sylvia Gonan. And then Dr. Crystal Brody will be talking about teacher blogging for knowledge curation. Maybe someone can share the uh, the link. Shelly's going to be talking about engaging students through blogging. 20 plus ideas. And then we've got Adam blogging about experiment. Oh, we hear. I heard something. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm going to take Sue off. Okay, Sue will... Yes, yes we do. There you go. And I, you don't have... You don't have your headset, so I'm I'm going to... That's okay. I'll just leave. I'll turn off. Now that's me. Stop talking. Okay, it seems to be fine now. Okay, Roselli. No, it's echoing. Oh, just go ahead. I'll just remove myself. Uh, can you hear me okay? Because uh, the guy is asking me to move to Mozilla Firefox. So you're okay. Good. Great. So we don't have to move from to Mozilla Firefox, yes? With Adam. Okay, great. Um, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, um, 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 Okay. Yes, we do. Okay, I'm going to take uh, it off. Okay. So, I'm talking today about connecting our children. Oh, you don't, them, uh, you don't have your headset, so I'm, I'm going so to... That's okay, I'll just leave. I'm trying to ask okay. you, what do you understand by connecting to your students? Please uh, write in the chat box. Okay, so 
seems to be fine now. Okay, we're so no, it's definitely. I'll just go to hold. I'll just leave myself. Uh, can you hear me okay? Because uh, the guy is asking me to move to Mozilla Firefox. So you're okay. Good. Great. So we don't have to move from to Mozilla Firefox, yes? Okay, great. Hi everyone, it's have you all here. Thank you very much for coming. Um, uh, I, I didn't have a good day. I had an infection and uh, I'm sorry if I get busy sometimes, but I'll try to do my best. Okay, um, so I'm talking today about connecting our students and having them uh, a more immediate sense of achievement. So before I start, I'd like to ask you, what do you understand by connecting to your students? Please uh, write on the chat box. Can you hear me? How can you connect to? How do you understand about connecting your students? And I'd like you to share your thoughts on the chat box. Good. Knowledge, communication, collaboration, what type of books? Good. Asking. Yeah. Very good. Discussion. Yes. Facebook, blog, good. Technology. Yeah. Great to go down. So, um, I'd start with a good rapport. Do you think rapport is the, the very first the very first important thing on connecting with our students well? Do you agree or not? What do you think about rapport? So let's move on the slides and then uh, let's see how to connect to our students and have them a more immediate sense of achievement. Okay. So why connect? I think we should connect because we need to get over it with our students. It is, it's impossible to be a teacher and not to get involved in, with our students in some way. Uh, to have more fun, to have a lot of fun and uh, with connections. Uh, to teach and learn, and learn with more pleasure and to give students a more immediate sense of achievement. How can we happen? How can it happen if we get involved in uh, and uh, connect better with the students? Which suggestions do you have apart from those you have you have given? Which other ways do you usually uh, set to connect with those students? Can you share in the chat box? I wouldn't like to be talking on my own. Email, good. Email. Skype. Mm -hmm. Who your students are, why they are taking your classes. WhatsApp, Twitter, blogging. Yes. All of them. Okay. Very nice. And how many of you, uh, Google Hangouts, it's wonderful. Okay. Google Hangouts is a possibility. Yes, it is. 
And uh, so, as I can see, uh, you 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 seem to use the technology. How many of you use technology to connect you with your, your students? Or you just connect with them via, via journals and the uh, uh, classroom reports? Yeah. Jordana uses use technology, me too. Good. Wow, great. Third grade to Very nice. Very, very good. Okay. Great. Great. So we are all tech teachers. If not, you weren't here. Yes? So let's move on. Uh, okay. I have some food for thought. Do you know who your students are? Why they are taking your classes? Why they like or don't like your classes? And how you can improve their learning in and out of the class? Do you have an idea? We need to, to answer all the class, all the, the, the questions. But I would very much like you to give some ideas on the four questions. How can you improve their learning in and out of the class? Can you share your thoughts on the chat box, please? I teach very different levels and the age, student age. They are teaching children from 10 years old and adults to 60 years, 60 year old, 60 years old. And uh, at some generation, then I am a teacher trainer. So sometimes it's not easy, like to, to communicate with the Flip students. learning. Great. Right. Sometimes parents get uh, annoyed. Great. They love our classroom blog. Classroom blogs are amazing. Yes. So, Photo the blog, the community. If students know you are available, they will email or message in blogs. Good. Yeah. Um, first of all, I, I have some ideas about how connecting with students impacts learning. Okay? Yes. I think they will be more comfortable expressing their feelings. Yes, I agree. You are a, a, a friendly teacher, but not their friend. I agree. Very nice. Okay, good thoughts. Very, very good thoughts. Okay. So, um, I myself have some ways uh, I developed to, to connect with my students and I do not connect them in the same way because I teach very different levels in the age, the student age, okay? I teach children from 10 years old and adults to 60 years, 60 year olds, 60 years old and the uh, exam preparations and I am a teacher trainer so sometimes it's not easy like to to communicate with the children via whatsapp because sometimes parents get uh annoying us with uh did he pass how is he and blah 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 so I I will show you some ways I connect with my students okay and uh, please feel free to share all your, all your ideas and say what you, what you think. Okay. Um, first of all, I, I have some ideas about how connecting with the students impacts learning. Okay? I think they will feel more comfortable expressing their feelings in and out of the class once the teacher connects with them, no matter the way. Okay, via Twitter, via journals, via Facebook, uh, group, group, group blogs, or such and such. The students are more likely to get excited about the course and improve their class participation. Sure, if they think, uh, if they notice that you are caring, you are giving them some attention, you are giving them personal attention, instead of oh you are just one more student i think that they get excited and they are more willing to do teamwork okay they they will feel valued and therefore more willing to be intellectually changed challenged by the instructor or teacher yes feedback is indeed very important for them that's why i, I i'm talking about personal care yeah and uh, 
I think that we cannot underestimate our students, and I, I, I think that it is very much uh, important, the idea of learner-centered lessons, okay? And in addition, or mainly, the strong rapport we create uh, with the students, uh, there is, it's mutually beneficial for both uh, students and teachers. Agreed? Any questions, anything you would like to add? Are you following me, guys? Are you following me? Good. Tom? Yes? Good. Good. Uh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I do believe that as a teacher, we are always a learner. As teachers, we are always learners. This is my, uh, my kind of my, my one of my main feelings as an educator okay so, uh, how can we connect with our students apart from what you said i have some ideas here you can connect to them face to face we have uh, online connections yes i have students that i have never met face to face but i connect them with them online we have the blended learning and we also have the use of mobile devices. I think uh, the, the mobile learning and the having students bring their own device is a trend in education. And it, it is really, really uh, what is happening uh, from now on. I think there is no way back. Uh, the same way there is no way back to learn without technology, there is no way back to learn without mobile devices. So, connecting with the students with technology, because technology creates learner-centered environments that, that support independent work as well as collaboration among learners. How many of you uh, learned at school uh, when the teacher were the, the, was the one who got the whole knowledge and uh, he gave you information and you have to swallow the information, no digestion, but you were just a listener. How many of you had this experience? Did you have more teacher-centered lessons in the past? Or did you have more learn-centered lessons in the past? Yeah, by rule, memorizing rules, formulas. I still cannot learn like this. <laughs> it's difficult. I think people from my generation uh, were not uh, taught how to think, but simply to reproduce knowledge. Yes? I do think it's very online. I need online. So uh, the same way I work good. Uh, face to face, I work online. Face to face and books, good. How much learning by road? With your work, not. Uh, no. The way you do this in terms of if it's online or face to face, the students deserve the same attention. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the classrooms uh, with technology provide students opportunity to connect. Yes. I learned how to, do, to learn when I was an adult. Me too. I learned by book, blackboard, when I was growing up these days, I'm using a lot more online learning. Yes, Terry. Mm -hmm. Fine. Uh, still face to face as well. Yeah. I think that we cannot make use of only one thing. 
I think that we have to be flexible. In my opinion, I try to be as flexible as possible because uh, I, I teach in a school, I teach online, I do teacher trainings face to face, I do teacher training online, I mentor online. So uh, the same way I work uh, face to face, I work online because the thing that it's about how much care you have with your work, not uh, the way you do this in terms of is it online or face to face? The students deserve the same attention. Okay, I'm still at school and I have to head home. Thanks. Okay, uh, so uh, the classrooms uh, with technology provide the students opportunity to connect prior learning with the current experience. Online teaching is just the future, but some people prefer face to face. I agree, but we can have online teaching and the, you, you, you can have blended learning. Yes, uh, exactly, Tom. You have to change from face to face to online or do both things. Yeah, okay. So, connecting with students with technology provides the students with the opportunity to connect to prior learning with the current experience, as well as they have access to a variety of tools and resources with which to work. Okay? I agree, Jordana. I prefer both. I think there is a time for everything. Yeah? That's why I am, that's what I am trying to show you right now. Okay, so the idea is that for me, if we use technology in the classroom, uh, we can have uh, more learner centered lessons because the students can bring their own ideas. I'm not uh, against face to face lessons, and I do understand that some schools or teachers do not have access to, to technology and they do amazing work. Okay? Let's move on now. Okay, my experience with technology started with the computer labs. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there were the computer labs. We used to have uh, to get our students to computer labs. Then we had computers in the in the classroom connected to a TV. Okay, and uh, then. Then there was a time when we had the interactive whiteboard, and we move. We are moving on to the mobile learning. Yes, I do agree. Learning is not immediate; it's an ongoing process. And so, online is perfect for for learning. Yes, it's an ongoing process as well as it is professional development. So, uh, we still have computer labs at school. I use the interactive whiteboard every day, but I do use mobile learning. And uh, I'd like to show you some ideas, some things that I do with my students. And I'd love to hear from you to what to do and uh, if you have any ideas to add to my ideas, okay? So, why bring your own device, mobile learning? Uh, it's expensive for some companies and schools to buy uh, to purchase new update technology. Technology changes all the time. Uh, the directors at my school, they, they spend a lot of money. Yes. And, uh, but anyway, they do not buy mobile devices or a set of iPads for each class for the students. But we are allowed to have our students using uh, mobile devices. Okay? Uh, this is an advantage because the students can bring their own mobile and uh, it's very funny when the term starts and uh, I say to my students, okay, next class please everybody bring brings your iPad your, or, or smartphones connected to a 3G or to the Wi-Fi we have at school because we are going to use it a lot. And students are amazed, and parents come to me to ask if it is true, okay? And uh, and nowadays uh, there is no way back. 
and student, uh, schools and companies recognize that the mobile learning, that technology is in the learning process. There is no way back. I remember Carlarina saying that knowledge is on the web. There is no way back. Okay, so, so my experience with technology starts with the Edmodo. Yeah, what I do with my students, yes, teach to learn, learn to teach. Very nice talk. I usually, at the first time uh, I have contact with my students, I ask them to enter the Edmodo. Before the term starts, when I get my groups, I I set the Edmodo groups for each level, and it is the first step for each group of students. Yeah, Edmodo is great, yes, and there is also Schoology, another platform very similar to Edmodo, but I haven't tried it yet. I've just discovered, yes, you don't like Edmodo too, why not? Could you share with us? Is that there is an app for iOS. Well, for, for the students, uh, Edmodo is, is easier to use. It. And uh, it has a similar face as Facebook, but it has only educational purposes. Okay? <laughs> yes, I agree. Moodle is very good. But uh, for the students, for schools, and uh, as schools are also using Edmodo for us, from, from language institutes, it's easier to use Edmodo because most students already have their accounts, okay? So, Edmodo has only educational purposes. The tasks can be shared uh, among students. Uh, we can give them individual or group feedback. Edmodo is assessed and parents can can feel safe and they feel safe because they know that their children's work are not like uh, on the web in terms of, like Facebook or any other social platform because the teacher is the manager of the group for each group and uh, uh, the teacher is the manager so it's easier for us to put and to remove things when it's not okay okay and the, the, the other good thing for Edmodo is that there is an app for iOS and Android. I myself have my Edmodo on, uh, on my iPhone and it is really hands-on. Okay? Any questions, anything about Edmodo? So, yes, Moodle app. is super safe and the tracking system is unlike anything else. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay, this is a sample of uh, my team three. I asked my students to prepare a small flyer uh, to, to tell what they do after school. So they prepared the flyer, they shared on that model, everybody could see each other's flyers and uh, compare, spot the differences and similarities. And I gave them individual feedback, okay? Because I believe that in this case, when they commit, when they make uh, spelling mistakes or uh, grammar mistakes, it's better to give them individual feedback and, and take from them the way they would uh, correct their mistakes. Let's move on to the other thing. Any other questions about how I work with that model? Are you okay, guys? I am. Am I too fast? Am I in the right space? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Let's move on. So, another app I use is Bitstrips. Yes. By the way, I did this one in the in the morning, uh, asking for inspiration because I had this headache and this infection, and I had to prepare this PowerPoint, <laughs> and I prepared this uh, bit strip. It is a comic 
uh, an app that you can prepare comic strips and there are many useful ways you can use it with their, your students okay it's both a web tool and uh, it's an, uh, there is an app for Android and iOS. The objective is to, to create comics and avatars. And how did I use it? I, I use it for presentations, both on vocabulary and grammar. I set homework posting images on that model. The students love when I appear like uh, with a bear or something. And, uh, with my my uh, a funny image like uh, I am on the beach, but asking them to remember to do their homework. They like very much. Okay, and uh, another thing is that we can create comic strips on any topic. What two things I did that were very effective with my students were I had my uh, intermediate to interviewing uh, their parents or grandparents about how education was like in their times and uh, they created a comic strip, a longer one, uh, using the images they, they got from, from the interview and also some quotations from the people they interviewed. The other example was uh, I we have to set readers for the students. So I asked my students that when they read, they read the book, apart from other activities, I asked it was uh, I was a pre intermediate two students. I asked them to recreate the favorite scene of the book on a comic strip and also uh, write some things about this scene. Okay, so there are some other variations. Could you have? Would you have any other ideas on how we could use comic strips? Thank you. Good, Tom. What variations would you give to these to use comic strips? How did you use this, Tom? Can anybody share? Okay. There is an app for Android and iOS. And an example on how I used it. It was I asked my students to create an animal. Uh, Good. Practicing language functions. Comic uh, movie. Movies. Good. Movies. Uh, yes. Movies. And uh, okay, very nice. And it was so beautiful, it was very, very beautiful. How many of you have used the Animoto or is aware of Animoto? Oh, Powtone. Powtone is good. What do you do with the Powtone? I think Monica. Comic presentations. Good, Monica. Thank you. What other similar app or web tool do you use? Animoto is easy to use and you can add music as well. Good. Very good. So, Animoto creates extraordinary videos for students' photo or for your photos. Okay. There is an app for Android and iOS. And an example on how I used it. It was, I asked my students to create an animoto uh, with the photos from their holidays. Uh, and some of them said, oh, teacher, but I didn't travel this holiday. Okay, so choose uh, any pictures of any holidays you had in the past and uh, create an animoto video. And it was so beautiful. We had very, very good. And Moto is free. As far as I am concerned, it's free. Well, the last time I used it was in February with my students. It's free. Yes, it is. I think for any of those web tools or apps, you have the, the, the premium account, the, the pro account. But 
you can have most of them from for free. Okay? Apart from Animoto, what other similar app or web tool do you use? Any ideas? I'm not familiar with Windows Phone. I have only one kid and he's got a Windows Phone. Apart from any mode, do you use Padlet? Yeah, I love Padlet. I use it very much. Yeah. Yes. Now Padlet's great. Padlet is similar to another one I will show you. Sure Pink Monkey Photo Editor. Very good. Okay. So, how many of you know about writing prompts? Yes, writing, writing prompts is a very, very nice app, okay? Uh, you can choose among many kinds of free prompts. For children, it is amazing, okay? You can use, uh, you can choose animals, uh, creative crime events, fantasy, historical, personal, science, and technology, and besides writing, okay? Writing prompts also works well if used as a speaking activity. Oh, you are a Windows man. Don't you use Android? But I think most, uh, Tom, I think that you can, uh, if you go to the, the, the websites, uh, some there are some apps for Windows Phone. I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with Windows Phone. I have only one student who's got a Windows Phone, and uh, I get in trouble every time I try to help him. Okay. Yeah. Mac and Android are, are easy. I think most apps are for Mac and Android, iOS and Android. But I, I am sure there are lots of apps for Windows uh, Phone, okay? So, uh, as I was saying, uh, writing prompts also works well if used as a speaking activity. That's what I did with my student. Depending with, uh, on the topic you're teaching, students can simply choose a prompt and talk about it for a while. It's very hands-on. There are very good uh, fonts, okay? And uh, you, have, you have the site available here. Uh, any other, do you use any other similar site to write in prompts? Do you know any other? Okay, I think you could move on. Linoit. Linoit is very similar to Padlet. Someone said that uh, uses Padlet. I am a huge fan of Padlet, but I'm trying trying to use both now. Linoit and Padlet because they are both stick boards and uh, we can do amazing things, okay? It works perfectly well for any audience, any students, okay? Uh, and also with the smaller children. Uh, last week, no, at the beginning of this week, I saw a teacher who teaches five, six-year-old students, and uh, she, she, they made an amazing Lino Week board, board, okay? Yes, but Wordle is a word cloud, yes, Monica? Wordle is a word cloud, yes, it's a very nice, I have, I, I'm, I, I am a very, a very huge fan of Wordle and I, I use uh, word clouds to do activities with my students, very good, okay? Uh, also, you know, it, as for you, know, you have the app for Android and iOS, and it's a collaborative and colorful tool, it is, you can have, I saw this teacher's board, it was very colorful, full of wonderful images because the students were very, very young, okay? And uh, it's uh, also students can, for example, make a stick board of the books they read, like this one, Mother Goose and uh, the Very Hungry Caterpillar and such and such, okay? So this is another app. I used to connect with my students. And by the way, every activity, every collaborative activity my students do, I'm included. Uh, for example, uh, I remember I, I recreated a Padlet about things we like and not like. 
like doing, don't like doing, and such and such. And I was asked by the students to post things about me, and it was very interesting, okay? Because they uh, they discovered, for example, that I hate irony, that I can't, I cannot iron. In, in, anyway, okay? So in the left, that means it was very nice. Yeah, so Padlet and Linuit, and uh, it's nice when we share, when we get involved, and we connect with the students with the activities they are doing. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Uh, okay. uh, another app I discovered recently, very recently, it was Songfy. Yeah, it's a very creative app. Okay. They can ex students can explore their creativity and compose short songs to be shared. Yes, song in five, exactly. Uh, children love it. It's for Android. Yeah, texts can be uh, can become songs, and students can send each other via Bluetooth, so they can appreciate appreciate their their songs. While they listen to the song, they can first read the lyrics and it can become a listening activity. This is an idea, okay? Uh, how many of you have used the Sony 5? Anybody? Tom? You have, thanks. No. Okay. So, try because it's fun. It's interesting. And uh, what is more interesting about this is that the students get kind of addicted to it. When the class finishes, uh, the class is finished, they, they want to create some things, some other things, and uh, sometimes in English, not only in their mother tongue. Yes? Yeah. I, I discovered it uh, recently, but the moment I discovered, I decided to use. Yeah? Okay. So, I have now my final conclusions. Uh, maybe I, I could have made it a bit longer, but I was afraid of uh, the timing. And uh, my final conclusions about connecting students with the uh, technology. The students and, and employees in terms of company, because we still, we also teach in company, okay, can use familiar devices to complete their tasks, okay? Uh, bring, bringing uh, your own device saves companies and schools uh, money by allowing people to use the devices they already have. The students will likely remember to bring devices if they enjoy using them. So, if you show that you are kind of uh, excited about using mobile devices as I am, Okay, I am very excited. I love my mobile devices. I take them with me everywhere. So it will be very likely that students get encouraged and motivated to use it. And also students stay engaged and take control of their own Okay, why is that the immediate sense of achievement? Because when you use a technology, especially when you use a technology, it is easier to, to, to share things. So, easy shareability, technology gives us easy shareability. Teachers connect the same way they connect to the world, okay? And you can connect your students to, uh, to another student from, to, from, with the students from another country, I'm sorry. For example, I have a group of students connecting uh, Malaysia. Okay, I had, I don't have any more. It was an experience I had with uh, the teachers, with, with a, a, a friend of mine, a teacher. They feel teachers care and have their works hands on more easily. Okay, uh, it is very, for example, I have it in my in my bag some uh, compositions to correct. In, in, in paper, okay? I have tests to correct, but I'm sure if it was in my mobile device, if it was online, they have been already corrected. So I take much less time to correct things when they are online. 
By the way, it's, of course, it is faster to type than to write, okay? Uh, in my experience, most parents uh, feel proud of their children' technology skills. Although they know they, their children are skilled because they can uh, handle much easier with uh, uh, a new TV or a new mobile or a new computer, but when they say when they see their children using technology for educational purposes, they feel really proud. Yes, and uh, yeah, I understand, Monica, and, uh, and and I know that for me, I, I can still use the pen, but my handwriting is getting worse and worse. Okay, uh, another good thing for me in terms of connecting uh, students with technology and uh, getting involved with their work is that it leads the students to learn independently much faster. Not learn a simple lesson, as the students can bring different, sorry, type of mistake, different suggestions to be shared, taught, and create new activities. I have some students uh, who, who, who tells me, who tell me, teacher, ah, we, we can do this or that with this app. And oh, I discovered this app. Let's do again with this. Yeah, so it's amazing. Not only their sense of achievement, uh, but they become sort of instructors as well. And uh, we get read uh, of the teacher centered lesson. On the other hand, we have to be very, very careful about not having technology as the center of the lesson. The most important thing of the lesson is our students. Our focus should be on learners. Our focus should be on what they are learning from us and with us. I do believe in social constructivism, and I think that Vygotsky must be very happy wherever he is, uh, seeing that uh, uh, social constructivism is being used with is being used with technology. Yes, students are engaged. Students are motivated. We still have a long way to go because depending on the culture, for example, culturally speaking, here in my city, in, in Etipi, some parents are still afraid that in the internet is the evil, that uh, I am going to share uh, photos of their children on Facebook or such and such. Okay? But everything depends on the way we approach parents and students, Directors, thank you. Thank you and, so much, uh, uh, Roselli, and uh, everyone for joining us. I'm sorry, um, I asked uh, Roselli uh, if she could mute her mic, and I don't think she knows how to. So, uh, as Tom said, uh, Roselli, if you could join us and everyone on the course feed on WizIQ so we can continue the discussions. You, uh, you agree that and learning uh, is I not like immediate and it's a process. Questions. So the I process is continue to continue the discussions on uh, WizIQ in the course feed. Something. You can ask questions Your and uh, perhaps you can share some of the links some of the uh, programs that you use with your students. There's a lot of information. You offered us a lot. And uh, we'd like to uh, be able to also practice. So it would be great if um, you could add some of the links and um, we can try them out. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. This was the first day of uh, the Spring Blog Festival. We've got two more days tomorrow. We're starting at 8 a.m with Sylvia Gonan and we're ending at 7 okay the last session is at 6 p.m. and then there's Sunday and we're starting at 9 from 9 to 6 so good night and uh, see you tomorrow thank you thank you so much for joining and uh, I hope you enjoyed it thank you Roselli and I hope you feel better. I know that you're not feeling well. So uh, try the ginger. It's really good. The root of the ginger is a secret of life. Good night.
I'll be adding uh, the YouTube and Vimeo recordings to the course feed as well and the courseware. Thank you.